Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Hobby Hangout for September 13th, 2019. My name is Tony. I am here today with uh, Danny Samuels, our hobby and terrain specialist. And our host for today's Hobby Hangout is Brian McLaughlin, Hello. one of our physical engineers at Privateer Press. He does a lot of cool things with models. He's going to show you some of that stuff today. But first, we're going to do a few quick announcements. Uh, we schedule, or sorry, we stream a few times a week. Uh, typically on Wednesdays, we do the Dev Hangout, 10 a.m. Pacific. That's when the devs of Privateer Press talk about all the games that we make. On Thursday, get your paint on with Jordan Lamb. Jordan gives uh, some painting tips and tricks. And then we have a couple of uh, monthly, semi-monthly shows, a staff showdown. That's where Privateer Press staff play some games you get to watch. And today, Hobby Hangout. Uh, where you get to learn uh, a little more about the hobby, kit bashing, uh, doing conversions, things like that. So Lucky Friday the 13th. Yay, Friday the 13th. This is going to be great. Also, we now have subscriptions available on our Twitch channel. <laughs> uh, so if you would like to subscribe <laughs> today, uh, Danny's laugh. I don't know what you're laughing at. Stupid, is it all the emo oh, stupid emojis? I love these emojis, especially <laughs> we got the Gubbin, we got Hamilton, our unofficial mascot. Uh, so if you want to get these to be able to post in chat, subscribe today. September, September is September. Now is a good time to subscribe. You get a half off subscription to our channel for uh, until September 24th. Did you just say September? Sub yeah. That's what it's I, called. I September. Hate I hate the internet. No, that's what it's called. <laughs> Just roll with it, Danny. Just murder me now. <laughs> uh, also, if you are interested in in hobby things, which I'm sure you are, if you are watching this, uh, Danny Samuels with us today runs a hobby Instagram where he posts photos of uh, Privateer Press projects and events that that go on. Just neat little things of of interest to see, kind of some of the stuff that he's working on, uh, different projects and things. So there are please. a lot of tips and a lot of tips and tricks on there too. Yeah. Like I'll post little quick articles as well. So it's a good place to get your. Uh, your kind of like hobby content and how to's as well. Yeah. Um, so check that out. Instagram, privateer underscore press underscore terrain. Definitely worth a visit. And we also have our mini crate updates. So for regular mini crates, uh, we have the brew bearer uh, is the, the next miniature and you need to subscribe before September 19th to get that miniature. Uh, and if you get the VIP subscription, six month subscription, you also get the transfer dancer mini. And for uh, Legend of the Five Rings, we have Isawa Tadaka. You need to subscribe by October 5th. And if you get the VIP six-month subscription, you're going to get Shosuro Sadako. We also have the Savage Mini Crate for Robert E. Howard's line of characters. We have a brand new mini that just went up yesterday. Uh, this is Belit. And if you get a six-month subscription for this, you also get the King Conan figure. All so sorts nice. of cool uh, stuff. Yeah, there's just minis everywhere. Yep. Oh, that belief looks so, so good. good. All right, let's get into it, Brian. All right. Uh, so today I'm going to be going over um, cleaning up and getting ready your Primal Archon today. A uh, couple things I'm starting off with here. I uh, just like to lay out all the models so that I kind of get a good idea of where things go. Um, got the left arm, right arm, legs, and the body. Uh, I'm going to start off with the body here. And uh, to start off cleaning some vents, um, this is exactly what you'd be getting just as you come out of the package here. And start cleaning off the vents so it's nice and easy to go. Uh, what I'm going to do here is reach across the way. And we're going to start off by getting rid of just this uh, vent here that's blocking the key. And, and for those who might not uh, have like a, a real knowledge of how the, the miniatures are made, what is a vent? Oh, the vent, uh, basically, it's where the air is coming out when they're putting the resin into the um, miniature. So resin's just going to be pouring in one way, and the air has to come out, so the air will come out those vents. And with any luck and our uh, amazing engineers in the back there, hopefully shouldn't have any bubbles, if at all, in the model. So what I've done here is just clipped it off there. If you notice here, I got like a really flat side to my clippers. You put those almost flush with the part and you can just kind of like slowly clip away and the uh, the flat side is yep. the important bit of that yeah right? you don't want to go the other way here because what it'll do is it'll leave like this little this little get well let's see if we can get that there better 
Right. Well, I mean, there that's we go. why, like, you invest in really nice, like, flush cutting, uh, flush cutting. Yeah, uh, formula P3. Cutters, exactly. Like, our P3 yeah. cutters are really nice, but, uh, you know, it works much better than a wire cutter, correct? Like, this is why you would not use yeah, a, yeah. a diagonal wire cutter, because it has the, doesn't cut flush. Yeah, right? and uh, you could also use, like, could, if you really wanted to, use a hobby knife or something like that, but for really big, rough work, I like working from the general to the specific. So general is clipping off the really big excessive stuff. Like we'll get rid of some of these vents here. So for those of us that like in the community that like don't know you, mm -hmm. what do you what do you do here? You do a million different things. Tell us about tell <laughs> I, us about you. And I, I want to preface, preface this by <laughs> saying that we were talking about this just before the show that that Brian has been here for a long <laughs> time, <laughs> the really better yes. part of a uh, decade. So yeah, pretty close. I've been here since 2011 May. Yeah, tell and us that story. Yeah, um, just started off here. Uh, working just as one of the resin casters in the back, and then eventually moved over to metal casting. Um, and now I'm working, well, then I moved into the mold shop making the molds. And now I'm actually doing the physical engineering where I basically, when the studio prints off the 3D model, I am uh, getting the physical model, looking at it, getting it ready to go, and um, getting it ready to make for production. So any little Thing that needs to be changed just to make a model reproduce a little bit better um that kind of stuff that needs to be done for it so we might have to make little changes like adjusting the fit a little bit better tightening things up taking into account things to make it actually castable like uh where we want to put the vents and things like that so is it safe to say that a lot of your job involves very specific oh yeah detail changes to models oh very specific and like a lot of cleaning like um the process isn't like 100% crisp and clear when it comes off the printer. It needs a little bit of work to buff and shine it up, clean it up, get it ready to go. And it's my job to make any of these changes um, so that it's not going to show up on any further castings down the line. Because it's not like we're taking the originals, putting them in a mold, and then just making copies to go all the way around the world kind of a thing. So. Right. When you say cleaning, you mean like when it comes out of the printer. For those of you that like don't know like clean like when it comes out of the printer it might have some fine like some small lines a little bit of imperfections yep. your job is to like sand those out make it all clean make sure it fits together if, if it, yeah if you need to move a rivet slightly i've heard and, like, oh yeah to Moving get a rivets. vent in there yep. you'll kind of like pop that off re-sculpt it in a different spot by hand correct like yeah, yeah uh there's all sorts of weird things that can happen where it just doesn't it the detail comes out a little fuzzier than what the artist's intention is on the digital files so then we have to go in and like sharpen up ropes, um, all sorts of like trim on armor is a big one, things like that. Right, right. Uh, since we're talking about that, we got Quasitor uh, is asking, um, can you talk a little bit about cleaning printed models some? He just got a resin printer. So how, how much of what you're going to talk today talk about today applies to resin uh, uh, printed models uh, versus uh, cast resin models? Okay, uh, so the big difference there is actually going to be the um, the difference in materials. Like, you're going to have a fair amount of the basic idea for things, like the basic principles of cleaning, like scraping your model. Um, like, for example, right here, I'm using just a rounded blade, and I find that these are actually really the best. Yeah, I was just about to ask, uh, can you talk through that tool real quick before you get uh, going? Yeah, I'm just going to... Uh, yeah, we'll just address that question real quick first. Yeah, uh, yeah. The big difference between like a cast resin like we've got here and something that comes off of a 3D printer is the brittleness of it. The stuff that I found with things off of the pre 3D printers are it's way more brittle and prone to chipping, whereas this, it's a little bit softer and it's more prone to gouring, which is kind of like the curling up. As you mm -hmm. can kind of see, it's uh, building up a little bit of the stuff there, whereas the... 3D printed stuff tends to chip and flake a little bit more it's because it's printed. Is, by the way, gouring. Yeah, I was going to say, awesome. is, the, is the gouring like is that like uh, like if you're filing off the resin where it kind of makes that almost fluffy clump? Yeah, yeah, the curly, yeah. the curly stuff. Yeah. Well, that's why you guys in the back I always see you have a like a basically one of our dry brushes. Yeah, like actually cut short. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, as you're seeing here, like I'm sitting here scraping away, and it's kind of like building up material all around there and what i like to do to get rid of it 
is just grab like just a little excess brush that I've got here and just brush it away. I got a little bit of uh, petroleum jelly on there just mm -hmm. so that it uh, picks up some of the excess dust so you don't have to deal with like the really fine resin dust or anything like that. Smart. Oh, that's really that, smart. And getting that small amount of jelly onto the model doesn't affect assembly or gluing or anything? Uh, actually, what it does is it does a couple of things for us. Um, the petroleum jelly that I put on there, it kind of acts as a buffer and it'll really make, like here, I'll just really gour this out a bit and dig in, make a yeah, bit of a mess with it. And then um, we'll just brush it off real quick with just a dry brush. And uh, then if you can really, let's see if we can get a good angle here. I'm trying to learn the camera, sorry everybody. Yo, I'm so bad So you can kind of see a little bit of it. And this one here, this brush that I got here is super loaded with petroleum jelly. So just put that on there and then we'll buff it up a little bit. And you can really start to see like where the shadows are popping up where mm -hmm. it's really dug in. So it just kind of like amplifies it. Now, the thing is that will really cause problems down the line for gluing, mm -hmm. um, painting or anything like that. But what I also have here is just a toothbrush, just across the way, toothbrush with a little bit of uh, rubbing alcohol in there. And oh, isopropyl is the best, yep. man. Is Not gonna hurt so the miniature much? at all. And you just get in there and scrub it off real good, and that gets rid of any of the rubbing, rubbing alcohol, any petroleum jelly, anything that you have in there, and leave just a really nice clean surface for you to glue, and it'll help with adhesion a lot better for the glue too. I, I literally, like at my workstation at all times, have like basically like a ketchup bottle, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, a squirt bottle full <laughs> of isopropyl alcohol oh. at all times, and I just like, dude, I just smother stuff with it. Like it, it went in doubt. If you're worried about a bond, pour ISO on it. Yeah, it's like scratch it up real good. It's just gonna help, or good. like a great trick um, with uh, isopropyl alcohol. I mean, it, you could use it for everything, but I, I'll tack stuff together with hot glue mm -hmm. to to do a like test fit or on a piece of terrain if I'm kit bashing. Right, I'll, I'll throw a bunch of stuff, throw a bunch of stuff together, um, and then I'll hot glue it to see how it would look because you could take isopropyl alcohol in that squirt bottle and squirt it on it, and it'll actually destroy the bond of the hot glue, and you can literally just peel the hot glue right back off of oh your piece God. without damaging <laughs> yep. it. So it, it's, man, isopropyl alcohol. Yeah, and so, I've got, uh, you can't really see it here, I'll just slide them into view. I've got like a whole bunch of different brushes that I use that are all just for, here's for scrubbing off the main stuff, the uh, toothbrush there. This is kind of like just the rough cleaning brush. I got my loaded up petroleum jelly brush my other just fine alcohol brush, and then one that I've trimmed down quite a bit here, um, just for a little bit more stiffness to it. And I've got those laid out kind of like, you know, in uh, kitchens, uh, the chefs have like the knives magnetized to the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I've actually got magnets that I just stuck in the brushes so that I can stick them to a little metal strip on my desk and have them easy access. That so was, like we that was one of the tips yeah. that Danny was telling me last week. Yeah, so now now I'm at home and I'm like, oh, I can saw these brushes in half. And so I made a two-sided brush to help and like Magnetize them, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. But it's just like, how do you keep it from getting damaged? And I was like, I just put a magnet in it and yep. I just stick it to my lamp. Yeah, so, unfortunately, <laughs> it kind of makes it that they like to stick together on on this table here because <laughs> it's not my true. desk set up. So I got a quick question about the alcohol. So yep. one of the things that I never do is I never clean miniatures before I start cleaning them and assembling. Like, I, you mm -hmm. know, you hear about washing them in soap and water and mold release. And to me, these are all legends. I don't know what's actually true or not, but I've never cleaned a miniature in my life. A, uh, is that necessary? And then B, could you instead just give it a quick swipe with uh, alcohol and have and clean off all that gunk if if it's there? Yeah, uh, it should work just fine. Just I've never had a problem just using a toothbrush like this and uh, giving it a quick scrub, getting yeah. using rubbing alcohol just to get that off there. And I've never really had a problem with the adhesion of paint or anything like that. Okay. So really. You really should clean your mouth. Yeah, you actually. should. You really yeah. should. Yeah. Um, just not to go too deep into our mold process. I, I want you like, to say no so that I don't have to add no, an extra step to my cleaning clean process. Your models, here's, Tony. The nice here's the nice thing. A lot of people tell you to use uh, to use dish soap um, and clean your model with it. Don't. It takes way too long. It takes a long time to dry. Like, like Brian said, alcohol on a toothbrush, man, it evaporates super yep, fast. It, does. it kills like, all the mold release. Just... Don't make it complicated. It'll be dry in like a second. Hit it with a hair dryer. It's done. Yep. 
Quasi- doesn't take long. It will make everything more durable, especially if you're going to game with it. Your paint won't peel. Yep. Quasador takes this up a notch. After cleaning before assembly, I started dumping them in an ultrasonic cleaner with Simple Green. Dude, Simple Green in an ultrasonic yep. cleaner if, is like an you've got absolute it. gem. Yeah, <laughs> like, if you've got it. I've, uh, I've cleaned a bro... I've, I've been... Just for fun, I shoved a uh, paintbrush once in an ultrasonic cleaner with Simple Green that was just like gunked with paint. Huh. It came out perfect. <laughs> oh, I bet. <laughs> it was amazing. So what I'm doing right now is um, I'm really getting used to this angle here. Uh, so I've got like, this is just a dental pick that I picked up. I've actually got a whole mess of them. Uh, yeah, your just, kit's very impressive. Yeah. I have just got to show off my kit. Whenever he opens that bag. I just yeah. want to be like, is like, it safe? <laughs> <laughs> it's so-, so it's just a bunch of dental picks, um, generic clay shaping tools, things like that that I picked up. Uh, over the years, craft stores, online, wherever I can happen to find a deal. And then what I've done is um, just gone in with a file or a belt sander or something like that, and then just filed them down to the scale that I need for a miniature. So you can really see that these guys are like perfect for getting into these tiny little nooks and crannies. Like, uh, where's a really good one? Ah, inside the mouth here. If you take a look... You got this little area, it'd be a real pain in the butt to get in there with any sort of a uh, hobby knife or anything. So you can just go in there with a nice curved little rake and just scrape diagonally across the mold line. And you can see how fast that's uh, cleaning out there. Yo, that's so cool. See, this is all great because- uh, It's you know, so nice. <laughs> when, I, when I hobby at home, like most of my time is definitely spent in the painting portion. So when I go to clean a model, I kind of, you know, clip off the big stuff, take my X-Acto knife, I get to the easy stuff and start scraping off mold lines, uh, maybe do a little filing, but I definitely get to these parts where I can see bits of flash and and excess that are in areas that are hard to get, and yeah. I just start gouging. Or, yep. or I just leave it because I can't get to it. So I, yeah. Well, okay, what you're I, doing I, right I now have, is have one no of my tips for how to for how to take care of that stuff. Sorry to interrupt you, but this is one of my favorite things I've geeked yeah. out about with Brian. This is the coolest trick I've ever seen. Yeah, Can you so, please go over this magic that you yeah, just did? So we got just your standard um, <laughs> so good. pin vice kind of a thing. It's got multiple different uh, collets in there so you can get different size bits. But what these are is a rotary tool tip. So we got like the super fine diamond tipped um, rotary tool polishing Ball. Oh my god! Yeah, and, so, and <laughs> since you're, since just, you're just <laughs> using it on resin, you don't even have to buy a really expensive wow. nice one. Yeah, and they're yeah. super cheap. Like I think I picked up a kit of, I don't know. I think I had like ten or ten to fifteen for five bucks there or something some, like yeah, that. Like they're super cheap. Places to buy things, right? No, okay. Yeah. I've never, I, I've <laughs> never. Uh, this is like the the simplest thing that i've never considered before i've never considered putting something that wasn't a drill bit into a pin vise literally yeah. just made a round tipped diamond file yeah yeah and what it's really great for is getting right up behind his teeth here right oh and you can gosh. just get right in there are you going to see it on a painted miniature probably not but it's really good for peace of mind just to be able to get in there and get every single mold line that you want to get out of there well i mean because, and also oh forgive me sorry yeah because uh every single model that you're painting um Anybody who's painted a miniature, you go put the primer on there, that first wash, that first coat of paint, and like every single mold line will instantly just yeah. jump right out they at just, you. And like you thought you. you got them all, and it's yep. like, oh, it's right there. Oh, I'm terrible for that. I'm terrible. Yep. That happens to me all the time. And, and um, you know, keep in mind, guys, uh, Brian, it's it really is his job to get the stuff ready to be molded. So a mold line, you know, on the inside of a mouth might not matter to your paint, but for us, it really does matter um, taking these, you know, these master castings and wanting to reproduce them for uh, for mass production. Like, that that mold line can't be there. Actually, yeah, I don't know. How I much mean, do you deal with the... Do you deal with cleaning resin masters much? Uh, um, I have, yes. Yeah. Um, we've actually even got to be really careful with some of our master cleaning and original cleaning as well because we've had instances where... And this is like a long time ago. I remember instances of being careful about like residues that we put on the miniatures and stuff like that, like mold release and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and handling the masters before we ca- like make a mold of them Definitely because right. people have put like, yep. um, I, I definitely recall something like it was the Stormwall bodies or something like that way back in the day. 
uh, there was a batch of them that had like thumbprints on them, yeah. and we were like, "Oh, wow. okay, <laughs> it even yeah. picks up thumbprints <laughs> off of Comes mold release." Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. I well, and I imagine <laughs> at that at that master level that it just you know if you if you let stuff go, even if it's little uh, or or you know fairly insignificant at the time you make it, that by the time it gets molded and then produced and gets into someone's hands to start putting together for hobbying, that those little those little problems can just compound and become bigger bigger yeah. problems. Yeah, and I mean, silicone inherently uh, chemically shrinks ever so slightly yep. uh, once you pour it as well, and then over time it also starts to leach out and shrink even more. So Brian, exactly. can you push your, up your just stuff, a little bit on the camera? Your oh, stuff sorry, is, going to, is going to compound a bit after a while, especially like once your mold starts to deteriorate, those small imperfections are just going to get bigger. Yep. And uh, so what I'm doing now is just getting in there. And now one thing that uh, I really like to stress when I'm cleaning miniatures and things like that, uh, particularly my own uh, miniatures at home or anything like that, is um, just going with the flow of it. Like if you look here, um, right up here, there's a little bit of a shift line going on with this guy. Mm -hmm. It's on a rock face. It's not really the end of the world there. All you do is just kind of like go in there with your blade and just shave it down. As long as it looks like a rock face and you can just kind of like scrape it away. Are you just kind of trying to erase that like yeah. symmetrical line look? Yeah, just uh, blend it in. End up, uh, what I'm doing is I'm hitting the raised side of it. So that's this side here. Um, and just kind of like shaving it down this way to make it match this side over here. And what I'm going to do is just roughly get in and get rid of the big stuff first and then go back in and clean it up a little bit more with various tools. So we're going to hide that mold line nice and easy. Now, what I like to do here is uh, you guys are seeing that I'm using the little rounded hobby blade there. That's a 15 or 15C is kind of like what the generic hobby blade is. It's um, surgical scalpels basically. And I know a lot of people really love to use, where is it? They really love using this uh, straight blade uh, that comes with all of the generic hobby knives and stuff like that. I don't like using the straight blade because mm -hmm. for one, um, just the length of the blade here, it flexes a lot more. So what happens is you'll see it and it'll uh, kind of like stutter and bounce a lot more. Mm. And the tip of them is so sharp that if you're trying to like get right in on like a little area here, you'll often end up uh, stabbing into parts that you don't want and have like weird little crease lines. That's never, ever, ever happened to me. Never? No. Constantly it happens all oh, the time. Okay. <laughs> well, also the nice thing about a, a round blade too is that um, like the point of contact is a lot smaller than the flat blade. So when you're, when you're using a flat, you know, triangular blade, um, it's, it's really flattening out the area because of the shape of the blade. Now a uh, a small like 15c like he's got there uh you can really get in there and control the point of contact and have a lot more detail with what you're trying to scrape out yeah like you can see here i'm just uh di more digging away and roughing it up than uh just flat shaving an area because if i were using that uh longer uh tipped blade that i had before it would be a lot more flat whereas here i can actually like rotate the piece as i'm going and um, get a mu much more contoured surface. So you can and see. If people wanted to get a, a surgical blade, where are some of the places they might be able to get those? Honestly, uh, you can probably just find them at any of the hobby stores. That's where I found them. They're not in the, you know, come with a handle packs or anything like that. You can find them just in the generic thing. Or uh, if you just search for surgical blades, um, surgical scalpel blades online, you can find them pretty quick and easy too it's awesome we have a lot of people in chat who have mentioned that that is a, that's a great tip they were asking about the blade nice. uh, missing task says thank you friend you have saved my life and something to also keep in mind with the round blade uh is um we i like to uh, brian keeps it pretty short in the in the handle yep. um now sometimes depending on your exact or wow depending on your hobby handle uh it won't fit so you have to cut the back yep so, yeah, so there you go. Uh, yeah. So what I've done, what I've done here is just take it with a pair of pliers, hold the blade side of it like this, and then just uh, put it down on the 
try and get this here. Yeah, just snap it off on the um, on a surface of some kind, and it'll break off pretty easily. And it should just fit right in there with whatever handle that you decide yeah. to use. Please be very yeah. careful. Yes, be very careful that. with that. And that helps eliminate chatter. I have a big pair of uh, wire cutters, almost like metal shears, and I just pop it with that. Yep, um, that works too. Also, so, Ryan Ryan was asking if any of us are kit bashing stuff for our personal projects right now. Danny's always kit bashing I have something. Such a weird piece going How on. How many that Ryan will love? Do you ever have one project going, or no. you you're always kit bashing like a handful a of things. things? Like I'm always walking downstairs to do something. Danny's always like, "Dude, dude, dude, come over here, check this out. Look what I'm working on." Yeah, because I like attention and because I sit alone <laughs> and I get really lonely. But right now, I'm actually I'm working on a piece for the Bellevue Art Museum. And so I'm making this like Wizard of Oz like spoof, right? Where it's got this big delivery truck, like that I you know I bought like a truck model, and I uh, I'm slamming it into the yellow brick road, and it's like crushing Dorothy, and then there's like sad Toto, and like her little red shoes are there, and there's like pool of blood, and so I'm like taking the truck and messing it all up, and the the piece is going to be called Am Ozon Prime. <laughs> And it's, wow. uh, yeah, the theme's modern mythology. I was like, this is a dumb theme, guys. I don't know what to do. So I'm just <laughs> going to, like, make all the other faculty where I teach mad at me by not taking this seriously enough. Yeah. So what I got going right now here is uh, just using the little rat tail file. Again, it's just another one of those rotary tool tips. Um, first little bit there you can see is all just, uh, that's where the grit surface is. And what I'm doing is following these natural striations in the rock face. Can you see that, chat? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can kind of see it. Yeah, um, and what I'm doing is just following those, and then just kind of like pushing it along to continue it along across that mold line to like redefine it and further blur where that uh, area was. And this is and now. This is definitely something that I also have had a lot of problems with. When I file my models, I just am kind of like filing like a crazy person, like trying to get. You know, especially I use a half round most of the time, and I just I don't really know what to do other than take the surfaces and and just try and scale that stuff off. So, what are some of the ways I can avoid doing damage? Uh, basically, it's just longer, slower, um, deliberate movements rather than just kind of like that rapid, just right chatter, chatter, chatter away you go. Yeah, um, just very slow, like planning where it's like, okay, I want to get a line going from here to here. Let's just work that in slowly and just kind of work it until it's there. Um, I'm way more of a hobbier than I am at, on the gaming side of things and more into assembling and cleaning miniatures than I am painting. Um, so I like to take a long time. I know a lot of people don't, but it's very much my thing to just sit and make a model look really pretty. Oh my God, can I pay you to do that? I hate assembling models with a fiery passion. It's actually <laughs> well, Danny, like, Danny asks me to paint more to, to assemble models all the time. All the time, and it's ironic, because like I should, like the, look, the last thing I want, I work on models and I scratch build things all day. <laughs> the last thing I want to do when I go home is like assemble someone else's kit. I don't want to do it, I just want to paint it. Just want to paint it. <laughs> We're getting a question of what is the most difficult model you've had to clean? You want to uh, throw that one out there? I have a great one. You're going to get mad at me for it. Oh, right off the top of my head. I want to almost say it was CyberCon was one of the ones that oh, just yeah? threw me for fits because all those little armor plate lines that he had, oh, yeah. they had just this little meniscus on the inside of every single one of them. So I ended up having to like scrape out and basically take the perfectly squared rake like this, something similar to that, yeah, yeah. and just go in every single one and just like scrape out all those little lines. So, so when you at home are putting guy. together that CyberCon and you don't have to do that, you remember this face and oh, thank this man. <laughs> <laughs> Most difficult model I've had to clean was, did you do the P3 Grandmaster Trophy? Was this your fault? Were you the mold? <laughs> no, I was a... Just, <laughs> just throwing no, blame, um, really, really. Like, I am, it had like, to have been you. No, I was uh, <laughs> I was the mold maker at the time. I poured that giant thing. You and we're not, not even cut. joking. This mold was like... This mold was, this so mold was like huge. Like Absolutely massive mold. Huge. I've never made a mold that big. We don't have a tank big enough right. to make that mold, so we had to do it in this weird 
multi-stage <laughs> process. It's this big trophy for the Grandmaster painting competition. It's this skull with paintbrushes instead of crossbones and all these P3 coins. And that mold, man, the mold was giant and it would Whoa. always shift and it would get some weird bubbles and just cleaning that thing going in and trying to clean a mold line and re-sculpt the coin. Oh, and, and casting those things, having to pour it, get all of it poured and through our uh, process of casting before the stuff started to set was a nightmare just because there was so much resin in that thing. That was actually my first job here was I like... I get here my first week. Dallas starts laughing, and he's just like, "Good luck, kid." And here's your first week. Lock and loads like in three days. Clean these dumpster fires. And I'm like, "All right." <laughs> like, they turned out really good. They ended up like, in our right. really good. So uh, what I'm using right now here is uh, just a little bit of emery boards. So if anybody does their nails, it's looking to do that. We got a few different grits. Um, these ones in particular have. Uh, different grits per side, so one side's a little finer than the others, and they work really good for just finishing off an area of a model. So we're just going in here, and again, just kind of like picking and choosing areas and just using more deliberate, smooth motions. And we'll give that just a little hit of the old petroleum jelly. So Benjamin's asking, uh, and I'll take this one, what kind of drill bit do you use to pin your metal models? Because uh, theirs tends to break. Um, that's just where you buy them from. Like, mm -hmm. I buy nice ones from a, uh, a fine jewelry store online, like a, you know, a jewelry making supply chain. So that's just a um, quality it's difference? Just, it's just the quality of the steel. Yeah, so again... Invest, we'll... you know, unfortunately, invest. So you can kind of see that mold line right along that rock face there is just completely disappeared nice and that had some major shift at the start yeah it was like re-sculpted it back in the resin basically and again yeah, for, the, for those who don't know what is shift oh shift uh basically it's where the two halves of the mold are coming together and they are instead of meeting perfectly like that one side's just ever so slightly off um it it's one of those things that just happens the molds as they age um kind of deteriorate um and trying to get the most out of them uh, it's just something that happens over time, or they just don't quite line up because a little bit of leaked resin gets in there from casting before and gets stuck in it. It's still good enough to make a good part. Sometimes it's just kind of skirting that line, you know? Right. Uh, Steve Joinus uh, wants to know what you like to use as pins. Pins. Uh, depends on what I'm wanting to <laughs> Depends on yeah, some. Depends. <laughs> um, Stop it. Don't get I, I started like on that. No, more, more. <laughs> um, I'll use paper clips is probably one of the yeah. best ones. Okay. Exclusively, yeah. exclusively yeah. use paper clips for a very particular reason. I want to hear what you, uh, what you say. Yeah, um, I'll just use paper clips. Uh, if it's a super, super, super tiny thing, I'll, I've been known to use like sewing needles, mm -hmm. um, just all sorts of things. Any, oh, literally anything. Talahar and Grim. I don't or know how they're one. Don't <laughs> encourage Danny with the puns, but please. <laughs> but I love them. Um, but uh, yeah, so so I use uh, I use only paper clips actually. I don't even use brass rod ever because with paper clips, um, well, one I'm pick, I'm pinning bigger things. Yep. But with paper clips, I, I have a tendency because I have hammer hand. Like I just I'm not careful enough. I I accidentally jab pins into my finger accidentally a lot when I'm trying to shove them into the model. Uh -huh. So being able to bend the paper clip where I have that round end, literally dip that in glue and then shove that into the model. Yeah. Holding the rounded end of the paper clip. Yep. It doesn't hurt me. It gives me like a handle to push in and then I clip it. Uh, yep. But yeah, don't use, thank you, Jerry Hart. <laughs> Do not use your hobby clippers uh, to cut the paper clips. No. They will... Bust no. a giant hole in it. Use wire cutters. Yeah, I, I you'll end up having that. like okay. uh, yes. little nicks and stuff in there. Like these ones I've had for a long time, and I don't know if you can. It's see like that. You, that you ground that down. That you, explains you a lot. That back, didn't you? <laughs> yep, yep. You got a little bit of uh, nicks and wear and tear in there, just from years and years yeah, of you, use. Yeah. You do not cut steel with your hobby clippers. Cut no. them with wire cutters. Yeah, Steve. Thank. Okay. Yeah, I'm adding uh, wire cutters to my kit now. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm doing here is this guy. This vent here. Um, because of this really awesome um, mossy texture coming off the uh, Primal Archon's chin, um, 
to be able to vent off of all of these different things without getting too, too much uh, in terms of bubbling, there's a little bit of a rough spot where there's a lot of vent there. So what we're having to do is like just do some of the trimming behind there. And the big thing is, again, working from the general to the specific, just trim off areas that you can and take it in little tiny bits at a time. You don't want to try and just clip it off all at once because what you'll find is that your clippers will slip into the part mm -hmm. and completely clip off one of those things. It'll pop it out. But if you end up doing something like that, you kind of work with it. Like if you can glue it back on, you can go ahead and do that. Or you can just say, is it really that important? Let's just, uh, you know, call that a happy little mistake and fix it up. Uh, Missing Tasks is asking if you can cut the metal that the models are made with with your um, ho with your hobby cutters. Uh, the yes, for the most part. Correct? You can for the most part up to a certain point. Um, like don't rip through like a troll's yeah, arm. Yeah, like I'm not gonna like, be, like yeah. I'm really not gonna want to clip off one of the fingers here. It's just too thick. You're gonna wreck your uh, clippers if you're doing something like that. I would really recommend uh, getting a jeweler saw. I was just about to say, I, I'm all day with the jeweler saw, man. Yep. I use that thing more than any other tool. All day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, jeweler saw, um, if you've got a rotary tool, um, just put like a really heavy tip on that thing mm -hmm. and just power through it. In fact, um, uh, Tanner on his Beast 09 conversion that he did back there. <laughs> I love him so uh, much. I, I ended Tanner up helping so him out. Planning some of <laughs> some of his cuts on that thing and carving out like I almost want to say it was like a third or so of the torso of one of the jacks. I can't remember which one it was. Well, there's a there's an and inc go ahead sorry yeah sorry. just carving and carving and carving and just shaving away all that metal. There's an insider coming out uh, or it already came out very shortly where I'm literally just dremeling through an entire model. Like that's the <laughs> insider is just taking a dremel to a model. Uh, another thing, Push if you guys just a little bit, Brian. If you oh, guys uh, dig super deep into the insiders, I believe this was posted. If not, it will be soon. I did do a. Uh, Brian's been talking about jeweler saws. Uh, I use them a great deal. It's one of my most used tools. I did an insider on uh, jeweler saw techniques where they're useful, and also how to make something called a bench pin mm -hmm. uh, to make your jeweler saw uh, work a lot easier. So dig into that insider. Um, it's somewhere. Yeah, we're getting a lot of we're getting a lot of chat requests for shopping lists. In fact, someone uh, I think Quasitor uh, was actively uh, online shopping for some of the things we've been talking about. So well, I don't know if I'm allowed to do that. Let's see what. Yeah, I it's something we'll have to look into. It's it certainly having a list of of tools that um, there are that like might issues be with useful, giving out but, exact yeah. product right. name. But the other is just keep well. keep watching Hobby Hangout and seeing uh, well, seeing here, what I'll Danny do, and Brian I'll just, are using. I'll just do this a little things. bit. Show off some of my really awful handwriting. Um, so those are just some of the some of the really quick things that I like to use on there: uh, files, blades, rakes, glue, and um, zip kicker, zip kicker, or uh, any accelerant kind of a thing. Um, silly putty. What I like to do, actually, I'll show that one because it's kind of a neat one. Is show me what you use silly putty for? Because I use it a lot for weird things. Yeah, I use a lot of silly putty just to kind of check my own work. If I'm not a hundred percent certain if I've got a mold line or whatever detail I'm wanting, I'll just uh, take it, smooth it out there, and then just put it on there like that. It takes about thirty seconds, and you can just take a look. And looking inside that area, it'll make a perfect re replica of your area, and it'll actually, for whatever reason, it seems to pop off mold lines a lot easier. And it makes a really great mask for airbrushing, I saw in chat there. Yeah, that's what I use. I use it a lot for uh, airbrush masking, like on my Cthulhu and stuff. Yeah. If I want to like airbrush the eyes, I just like mask all the weird blobby stuff, and then, uh... yeah. Is that Getz? It's Getz. Getz is in the chat. I'm Ooh, so happy. Hello. Oh, I love Getz so much. All right. Hi, Gats. So. Yes. It is Danny that you hear. And Brian. Hello. All right. So just, again, getting behind here, and I've just about got this. Right. Push, push up I'm into happy. the middle just oh, a little. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I'm, I'm actually way more used to it. Like um, at my desk in the back there, I've got like – um, my little hobby light that's sitting like right there, mm -hmm. and I'm almost resting my forehead on it, and I've got like the miniatures right there in front of my face. So, see, for me that would be a problem because I also store a lot of my knife blades on my lamp with magnets. 
oh yeah mine are like <laughs> over here so i can just reach and grab them or just reach and grab them from over on the side area like right over there my workstation is literally just a hazard like it's it's bad and I, isn't it ironic that i'm like on the safety committee for work <laughs> I question that. I, I created a near miss form for myself. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> examples of what not to do, right? <laughs> so, if you take a look back here, we could replicate a bunch of this um, moss texture if we really want to. But in the grand scheme of things, and this is something I'm always looking at when I'm looking at a miniature myself, is anybody ever going to see it? And this guy is sitting here. How's this guy? He's sitting here looking like that, and under the, underneath that little chin area, probably not going to get too much attention, so I kind of get lazy sometimes and don't really recreate all the texture that could be back there. But we're getting most of it out of there, and it's nice and clean. And see, I'm just kind of coming at it from both sides and just wedging it out and digging it out like that. Um, what else do we want to go on to? Um, do you ever, your, uh, your pin vice trick with the, um, the diamond bear, mm -hmm. do you ever use the spinning motion of the pin vice for your, to your advantage? I would think that uh, that'd be really sometimes. great. Like you've got the ball on there and you can just kind of like, spin yeah, actually it against, uh, I was you know. doing it a little bit when I was in the back there, especially if I actually I'll do it right now. Um, we do have one little tiny bubble that I found when I was going here on this guy, uh, just a tiny little one yeah, right there. So what I'll do is I'll just take the tip of my tool, just stick it in there and just kind of like open up that bubble. And this is actually something that's really good for uh, doing it is, again, I've got more rotary tools. These ones here, I just ended up just uh, snipping off a brush and drilling a socket for <laughs> it. So it's... This one's actually more of a sharpened burr tip, so it's something that you would be using for gow uh, for digging in, scratching, uh, drilling. Oh, dude, Kalen gave me one of those that he made, and it's my favorite thing ever. I use it to make my pilot holes if I'm doing some really, yeah. really fine pinning. No, I often use it for uh, scratching in that yeah. initial line of something, and then I'll go in with different tools just to kind of like follow that line and trace it afterwards. But these guys here, what I'm using is just kind of poking into where that bubble is, just give it a little spin like that, and it'll open it up a little bit more. And this is where I'll take my finer brush that doesn't have any petroleum jelly or anything on there. And we're going to repair this bubble super fast. So going over to my uh, palette cam here. Now, here's the really big trick that I, like, I'm a big, big fan of is do not, do not, do not, do not use your uh, super glue directly out of the bottle God bless i see you. so many people that just <laughs> take that big big fat tip there and then just squirt the glue onto the miniature and it makes such a mess you you're both making me very self-conscious right now <laughs> oh i'm sorry Dodie. <laughs> um so what i do is i'll take my super glue and just put a few drips into a reservoir here now what this is is just a little bit of extra rubber that we have kicking around the office here uh you can use anything like a wet pal not a wet palette um some wax paper, just one of these like regular pallets. Anything that you're willing to destroy and just accept is dead. Old uh, old Tupperware lids, something yeah. like that. Yeah, you yeah, know, anything. You know, anything. You know what actually containers. works really well? Sorry, uh, the um, what is it like those snap lids of like Pringles? Yeah, it's like oh sure. Uh, it has the lid. Yogurt but also, lids or yeah, something. Yeah, but super glue for some reason does not like to stick very well to that plastic for some huh. reason. So you Weird. can actually kind of like pop it off for a while before it gets too uh too dried out yeah so then what i'm doing here is i'm just taking like one of your little clay shaping tools one of one of my little pointy metal things that i've got a toothpick works really good too and just using that to apply it because you can get way smaller amount of uh glue and then what i'm doing is just putting a tiny oh, tiny down a little lower a little lower oh, sorry and then just taking that tip and putting the very tiny amount and just cramming it into that bubble and then I'll take now this is a trick uh, just using some baking soda is a really good super cheap way if you don't have any accelerant or anything like that to wonder, uh, kick wonder, the glue wonder who showed you that one uh, yeah I know uh, it was some, <laughs> some really cool guy around here <laughs> I also think I did so an not insider. Danny. I also think I did an insider on that too 
it might not be up yet. I'm spoiling all the inside. I just sent them like a stack of like thir- like. Well, that's good. We had, we had a lot of people. <laughs> uh, we had some people asking uh, for more insider content. Yeah. So more is coming. I, like I just guys, I've posted a million hobby insiders. Just look, they're they're there. Just dig. Yeah. So uh, I've kicked that super glue off. It's already done. Super easy. Filled that bubble. And then <laughs> super easy. <laughs> simple matter of just sanding down any of the excess that you got here, and just like that. Your bubble's filled. Now, you can use something like some putty if you really want to. It'll get a really good finish on it. Um, but then you have to wait for a couple hours for the stuff to dry or whatever it takes, uh, depending on the putty that you're using. And what you just did is dry now? Oh, yeah. No, it's, it is hard. That like, seems like a great reason to not use putty. <laughs> yeah. I, I like using putty when I need to, but... Um, I don't have time to wait for for filling a bubble or anything like that. Well, and the 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 um baking soda does a lot of that for you. Yeah, absolutely. But the um, well, another cool trick you can do actually is you can mix um, what is it, talcum powder into super glue, and you can actually make a slurry putty. Yeah, yeah. But then you can kick off, so it's actually like a super glue slurry. Yeah. I use that to fill stuff a lot. Um. Oh, and then, so our super glue now that we've like restocked it is like really really good um but i also there's a trick i like to do where you can actually pick up at a hobby store extremely like water thin super glue Mm -hmm. and so if i'm gluing a really fine part i put it in a reservoir like ryan showed um the super thin stuff but i actually have these little uh chisel blade um you know hobby knives and you can actually pick up the super glue with the um hobby blade Mm -hmm. hold your model together and you can wick the the super thin glue right into the part almost like your plastic cement where it like seeps in capillary action like pulls yeah it in. no no you that's the same thing with your super glue and for you know super what? detailed stuff i do that. let's actually do that right now so uh got the big old metal metal arm on this guy here um i was actually debating whether or not the decision to pin or not to pin on this one because it is a big beefy arm it's metal and it's kind of like floating there there's a lot of metal on this thing uh, I actually decided not to because, really? uh, for one, the female side of this key is super deep, um, and or the male side of the key, and fits in there super snug. Uh, the rest of the arm socket here where it fits in is super nice and tight and snug, so I really don't think that there's too much of a reason to pin it. If I was really into the habit of dropping my models or, you know, had four-year-old kids or something that liked to play with models and was a little rough with them. Or you I were would. me and you're basically four-year-old mentally anyway. <laughs> right? I always pin my stuff because I can have no self-control. Uh, I, I try not to just because I'm impatient like that. Um, so just going over here, we'll just take a little bit of super glue. Again, super easy application. You can get right in there. Very thin layer. A, I find that I have way better luck with super glue the less that I use. Like lower and lower, lower amounts. So for this, I can't really get in there with the uh, baking soda. So I'm just going to go with a little bit of this accelerant. Dab that in there real quick. And that should. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Now, if I look here, uh, Danny was talking about like that wicking in material. What I want to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this rubbing rubbing alcohol just to clean off any of that excess uh, accelerant because I do not want this to kick the second it comes near that joint. Toby Curtis uh, has made a comment saying, score those joints, which is definitely something I've heard before. Is there a need to score the the joint in this case? depends on how confident you want to get with it uh, and how strong you want the joint. Um, Like I was saying, this one here is such a deep key and it is like all these craggy, rocky surfaces, the vines and everything. You can see just how deep this actually sockets in there. I really don't think that's going... Oh, there it goes. Never mind. Oh, I feel like a fool. Yeah. So (laughs) we're going to go do that. Thank you very much, chat, for that. And it's just take any tool you want and just uh, scratch that in. 
again, most of the time, my miniatures are just going home, sitting on a shelf, sitting in a display case, looking super pretty. Right. So I don't really move them a whole lot, and they don't need to be nearly as rugged as uh, some people's would need to be. So I'll go like that. And I'll just uh, scratch this one up a little bit. I'm actually not going to use my good tool on there because I don't want to ding it up on metal too much. Got the, the, we have an interesting question here. I don't, we don't have a whole lot of time to get into it deep. It, it might be something to talk about uh, for a, a future episode as well. But real quick, Danielis uh, asks, um, can some engineers get on here sometime and tell us the complications of casting and why there are hybrid kits? Um, and that's a good question. Why, just real quickly, why do kits have some resin parts and some metal parts rather than being 100% one or the other? Um, well, it's honestly, it's not something I'm terribly involved in. It's uh, a decision that's made above my station. Um, but a lot of what the decision to make metal or resin part is the ease of casting. Uh, if something is going to be a good fit for metal, um, it'll be a better, like, the parts will be better for metal than they will be for resin. Um, it's mostly that kind of a decision. Okay, so so it's uh, mostly a parts question, not a kit question. Uh, I believe okay. so, if I'm following the question properly. It's like some things, you know, some things the way that there's... Spinning stuff in metal is far faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. First off, right? Yeah. So there are there are there are reasons why certain parts, if we know that they can go into metal and that they would key well and cast well, we might tend to lean towards metal, from what I understand, because we can spin them out really mm -hmm. fast. Yeah. Also, if we have any miscasts, you could just melt the metal back down. Exactly. Yeah. There, are, there are a lot of good benefits. That, no, that's of a really using good metal point. for parts that we can. Also, I've seen a lot of things like small hands, fingers, mm -hmm. parts mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. will tend to, from what I see, uh, cast those. Sorts of hands separately in metal because they're a lot more durable. You're not gonna get you're not gonna get snappage, right? If yeah, right. yeah. We try pointing. to go with uh, things like little uh, s staves and um, spindly weapons. We want to go with them in metal because they're just gonna cast a lot better. Um, if a bubble gets caught in like a little staff, it's not gonna evacuate the mold nearly as well as it will for when it's cast in metal uh, spin casting. I also understand that size is a factor as well because you get yeah. a certain size as a metal piece is just. Oh, heavy and yeah. huge. Um, I remember when the Extreme Carnivian first came out, um, yeah, when it was all metal, uh -huh. I was one of the ones who f cast those first ones, and those hands were looking at like a five-minute spin time on some of the metal parts, and most of the time for metal parts, um, you're looking at like 30 seconds to a minute yeah, spin like time. Minute so tops, Yeah, right? five <laughs> minutes was waiting forever. Uh, so what I've done here is uh, just... Scored that up. It's much more solid now. That's definitely not going anywhere, thanks to that scoring. Um, washed off the accelerant in there. And then what I'm going to do is just use this little tool. In fact, I'm going to use an even finer uh, tip. This one is actually just made out of a sewing needle stuck in a handle. Um, and then just using a lighter to heat it and bend it. And I I'm love that tool. I come and steal it from your desk quite often while you're at lunch. You steal my probe? Yeah, when I have to use your glippy glop. Ah, uh, so then I'm just taking this, and um, I've got like a little bubble of uh, super glue on there. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm doing is just getting it nice and deep into those recesses, and letting it wick in, and that'll just really reinforce that joint, and actually serve as a little bit of a fill as well. Like if there's a tiny little bit of a gap, uh, super glue can actually work as that, just like I was filling those bubbles. And you can always, if it's an area that's easy enough to get to, like, you can file your superglue back. I use superglue yep. as filler. Oh, yeah. A ton. I probably, actually, superglue might be my most used filler in terrain. Yeah, you're, yeah. Um, you know, that with a combination. So, like, I'll even tape off the back of something that has a hole and I need to fill it in. Put tape on the back, uh, put a bunch of um, baking soda into it, and then just pour superglue onto the baking soda, and it solidifies. Um, and then I can just sand it back. So we've got uh, we got a couple minutes left. Um, if anyone out there has questions for Brian, questions for Danny, questions about hobbying, modeling, we will be back in a couple of weeks. Uh, but if you can get them out in the next few minutes, we can try and answer some more of those questions. <sighs> a lot of baking soda there. 
It's all right. It's basically just toothpaste. Yep. All right. And then, as you can see, got a um, nice solid joint. And some of that gap work has been filled in right up in these areas there. So that hand's not going anywhere. <coughs> um, so we've only got a couple minutes left. Oh, yeah. yeah. Give, give or take. Yeah, OK. Um, so yeah. What else do we want to cover here real fast? Let's just show off the rest of this kit. Uh, Quasitor they... wants to know what the puff bottles are called, if they have a specific name, whether you have the, uh, the baking soda. I have zero idea. I, I don't even really know where they come don't from. No, they just showed up here one day and it's like, will these work for you? It's like, yes, yes, those will work. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, so I, I stole two of them from a, pr I appropriated <laughs> two of them from a previous job. Yeah, um, and I, but I don't know where they came from, and then I handed it to Kelly. Yeah, our, and he just likes to serve. Kelly can find anything. Yeah, tool wise. he is amazing. And when so it comes I don't to know that. where Kelly got them. No, he was just like, we need those, and then they just you showed know, up in a box. <laughs> now that I'm looking at it and really thinking about it, these kind of look like some of those things um, back in those really early school projects where it was like fabric painting on t-shirts and yeah. stuff like yes. that. I think, yes. that's, I think that's where these might be from. That that would be worth taking a look at. Um, so, that's the other. So, just show off some of the really cool joints on this guy here. Like, I, ha I haven't actually done any cleaning whatsoever on, these mo on this uh, arm. Um, I'll probably just go in and do a little bit of a rough clean around these edges here um, just because I haven't shown off any metal cleaning yet but no cleaning at all on these and like that is a really really slick joint that's going to be super easy to glue and hide really easily like this one's even better I love that joint um, striker 911 <laughs> will we have another hobby <laughs> hangout or has Danny gotten the show canceled well he's already been demoted from host to guest um, Sorry, so Danny. we'll have to see about the next episode if he can redeem himself and, and come back on as a host to show you another project. And with that, uh, we are going to say goodbye. I would remind you that uh, this is typically our stream schedule. However, next week we are moving our office, our entire office, so we will not be having our stream schedule. Uh, so no streams next week, but we will be resuming the following week, which I believe our next broadcast will be on the 25th and i also yes in answer to your question yes i will be doing a live stream and yes i am already <laughs> working on a really cool new kit bash for you uh it's gonna be a really really fun one um yeah. i've got it going for you already yeah uh, if uh you guys have any more questions or anything that you want to find out more about the hobby side of things um please feel free to shoot us some questions um Hopefully we'll get it back up on stream or something like that for doing other models, doing other kit bashes. I love answering questions. So, And if you have yet to subscribe on Twitch, please do so. To, it is September, so through the 24th, you can get half price subscriptions to our channel, get a whole bunch of fun emoticons, and then we've got a lot of stuff planned uh, for future rewards. Uh, I think that is everything. So, Brian, say goodbye. Bye. Danny, say goodbye. Bye forever. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching. <laughs>